Hello and welcome to Mavzone Dentistry. Today we are going to discuss why it is paramount to examine the oral mucosa of each and every dental patient. In this lecture, I have included few extracts of dental research and tried to explain how to effectively examine the oral mucosa. Whenever a patient walks into the dental office, we begin the process of management by documenting the chief complaint of the patient. This is followed by evaluation of his or her chief complaint and formulating a treatment plan. Commonly, a patient will have more concerns that has to be addressed other than the chief complaint. It has been well documented that the most common reason an individual seeks dental consultation is pain in the tooth. This is mainly because of dental caries that has progressed to involve the pulp or the periapical areas. There may be other causes which might have led to pain in the oral cavity. This is an extract from a research conducted in a dental hospital in Kenya where it was found that dental pain was the most important cause for a patient visiting the dental clinic. This is another study conducted in India which suggested that toothache was reported as a chief complaint by 33% of the patients. Another study conducted in Saudi Arabia also reported this figure to be over 35%. The point here is most of the patients approach a dental surgeon for issues related to the tooth and not necessarily a condition of the oral mucosa. It is our duty that we routinely screen the oral mucosa for any pathologies and educate the patient regarding its existence and proper management. An effective diagnosis will go a long way in effective management of the patient and also in avoiding any undesirable outcomes of more aggressive pathologies. A number of pathologies affect the oral mucosa as well as the submucosal tissues within the oral cavity. These may range from simple reactive hyperplastic lesions to potentially malignant disorders. Some lesion may be benign in nature whereas few may turn out to be malignant. This study from a Lebanese dental school highlights the various pathologies encountered in that institution. This is another study from India that highlights the various oral mucosal lesions and found a high prevalence of smoker's palate in their study patients. Lesions with malignant potential were also encountered but with lower incidences. The authors have also highlighted the presence of normal mucosal variants which the clinician has to be aware of while performing the examination of the oral mucosa. These are all studies that have been conducted at dental schools and hospitals. The documentation in private dental clinics are largely undocumented. Either such cases might have been missed or referred to a specialist center. Whenever a patient visits our clinic, we always begin by listening to the patient's chief complaint. This helps us to understand why the patient needs professional help and also assists in building rapport with the patient. This is followed by further questioning which helps us gain more insight into the patient's troubles. Taking a thorough medical and habit history is also very important. Make sure not to miss out on any allergies that the patient might be having. This is followed by evaluation of the oral cavity. The primary focus would normally be on the dentition since the patient would have approached for a tooth related issue. The heart tissue examination begins with the evaluation of each tooth which includes noting down decayed, missing or filled tooth whether the tooth is fractured or affected by any regressive alteration and so on. This is followed by evaluation of the periodontal status which includes the presence of plaque and calculus, gingival inflammation, mobility and furcation involvement. The teeth are also evaluated for status of occlusion and finally we would do an examination of the temporomandibular joint. This is followed by a soft tissue examination which unfortunately tends to be brief in most cases. Probably this is one of the reasons that a lot of mucosal pathologies are missed out. Thorough evaluation of oral mucosa is essential to root out any premalignant or malignant changes of the oral cavity. What we should follow is the 8 steps of oral cancer screening. This includes a thorough visual examination and palpation of each and every part of the oral mucosa. The illustration here shows the 8 zones or locations within the oral cavity that needs to be evaluated. Look out for the presence of any non-healing ulcer. Rule out any inflammatory cause by applying proper management before concluding it as a non-healing ulcer. Make sure to check for any sharp cusps which could be the cause of the ulcer. 
Also, look out for any color changes. Any brown or grayish brown macule should be assessed using the ABCDE criteria to rule out melanoma. Also, look out for the presence of any plaque or growth on the oral mucosa. Palpation involves noting the texture and consistency of the oral mucosa. This should be done by digital or by manual palpation. Examination of the oral cavity should always be followed by evaluation of the neck for any palpable or tender cervical lymph nodes. Remember here that not all tender lymph nodes are indicative of malignancy. More commonly, these are due to an inflammatory cause and should be ruled out first. The illustration here shows the location of the various group of lymph nodes in the neck. Orientation to these sites will be helpful during examination. Finally, the tonsil should be examined by depressing the tongue with the wooden tongue depressor. Check for asymmetry, ulceration or redness. Any hoarseness, voice changes, difficulty in swallowing or one-sided pain should be noted down. Various researchers conducted worldwide have suggested that most of the oral cancers are detected at stage 3 or stage 4. This would affect the prognosis of the patient. Hence, early detection is the key. Careful examination from our point would go a long way in reducing the morbidity and mortality associated with oral cancer. I sincerely request one and all to make a thorough evaluation of the oral mucosa a routine part of their dental practice. Today, we are celebrating World Oral Health Day. The theme for this year is Be Proud of Your Mouth. Let us all make this happen for the entire world by being actively involved in promoting oral health for one and all. With this, I conclude this topic. Please write down your thoughts on the comment box below and discuss further on this topic. That's it for now. Stay safe and see you soon.